ended up doing not that which was convenient, but they took a harder path. Those things which were not convenient, they ended up doing because they choose, chose not to acknowledge God and worship Him in the flesh. They, re, they refused to accept Him as their personal Savior. They were hardened. Because of that, God gave them power to do whatever they wanted to do. And He allowed them to become more easily deceived by other gods and ideas. When we look at this world, and even this life, we know that there are two forces that are constantly fighting against each other for a lot of better terms. We know we have God's side, and we have the enemy's side. If we ignore God, who do you think is going to creep in? If we ignore God, who's going to seek for our worship and our praise? No, it doesn't matter what we want to do. We have a God consciousness. But if we choose not to worship God, then we're going to get preoccupied with something else. And there are those that worship themselves, but the enemy also desires to be worshipped as a God. And because of that, we have all these other gods and all these other different religions. These are demons wanting to be worshipped as gods. And we see the shift here. Man chose not to worship God, so who does he worship instead? He begins worshiping the very thing that was meant to point him to God. He begins worshiping nature. You know, the devil likes to take those things of God that he's meant for our benefit and twist them and corrupt them. And that's exactly what we see going on in this verse as well. Not only does man worship nature, but we find that he has allowed the enemy to come in and corrupt that which is perfect, the nature of God, and use it against God and use it to drive a wedge farther between God and man, to, to separate him even farther. And when man refuses to worship the one true God, he opens himself to all other kinds of things in this world. And it's not just what we want to do, but he opens himself to every attack of the enemy as well. And his mind gets distorted and twisted. His ideas begin becoming sometimes off the wall because he chose not to worship God in the flesh. He chose not to fellowship with him. And Romans chapter 1, verse 22 through 23 states exactly what happens to this man. When we choose not to worship God, a lot of times it's out of pride as well. We think that we know better. And what happens when we know better? What's that uh, phrase? Teenagers, quick move out now before you know uh, more than you're, uh, before you your parents know more than you do. No, man has been that way from the very beginning. And he's done it with God. And if we choose not to acknowledge God, and if we choose to separate ourselves from Him, we will, do, we, even though we had a lot this morning with that little phrase, but we get the same mentality. We know better than God. We don't need God. And because of that, we think that we're wise. We come up with this theory. We come up with that theory. We come up with this religious theory. We come up with that philosophy. And thinking ourselves as wise, the Bible states, we become as fools. Because we have separated ourselves from God. And because we chose not God and wanted nothing to do with Him, He has allowed us to go our own way. He's allowed us to go off into our own ideas. And he's allowed us to go off to our own practices. The heathen is not lost. He has a light. But the more that he chooses not to acknowledge God, the farther off he goes. And that can be the person in the most remote tribe, or that could be any one of us sitting in the pews today. If we choose not God, and if we want nothing to do with him, he will allow us to go our own way 
can do whatever we want, not because he hasn't tried to reach out to us and draw us in, but because us thinking to ourselves that we're wiser than God, that I know what I'm doing, I want to do what I want to do in this time, he allows us to go off because we want nothing to do with God. He gives us over to our own thoughts and our own imaginations. In Romans 22, 1 verse 22 and 23, actually begins off in verse 22 stating, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the corruptible, uncorruptible God into the image made like unto corruptible man. And it goes on to what he has created. He's worshipped nature. And thus it is evident that they thought they could make themselves wise. As a result, they formed their idea of religion that consisted of idols and heathen practices and as a result of that, we get such tremendous and amazing and outstanding practices that are absolutely mind-blowing and change the course of nature and the world for the better, such as cannibalism, human sacrifice, the sacrificing of a female virgin at the perfect age, because professing ourselves as wise, the heathen has become a fool and has changed the glory of the corruptible, uncorruptible God into something that is uncorruptible, that is, in, that is corruptible, that is tainted, that is not pure, that is not holy, that is devilish, that is carnalish, and is wicked in every single way. And professing themselves as wise, they became a fool. And we'll stop here today. We'll pick up next week. Does, have, does anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add to it? <coughs> so looking at what we've looked at so far through the Word of God, we can see that even the most remote, remote person is not without God. They have a God consciousness and nature itself points them to the fact that there is a God. Let's bow our heads and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that your God reigns so high and that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, Lord, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be in one mindset and one accord that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move as he so desires to make himself visible if he so chooses. Anoint the pastor as he brings forth your message today. Anoint his mind and his lips to bring forth your word. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be plowed that you can soil for it to fall, Lord, that we may remember throughout the week, Lord, but even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives. Give the pastor a special blessing this morning as well as he preaches. Anoint the song leader and the musician, Lord, as they lead us in the songs and have us to sing, as they lead us in the songs that you have us to praise you upon the strict instruments and the vocal cord, give them a special blessing as well. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus.